Third floor here at the Hilton in Uptown Charlotte, we begin our men's basketball tip-off rotation in our first school in the ballroom today, the Cardinal of Stanford. We will hear from head coach Kyle Smith and visit with our two student athletes coach. So if you'd like to address the podium, folks, if you have a question for our folks with Stanford, please identify yourselves and the agency that you are with. Coach, we've got microphones that we will rotate on the right side. We will start in the second row right here in the middle. Hi, I'm Destiny Vance with the Juice Network. Um, hi, coaches, hi, athletes. Hi. My first question is, with the change in conference, how does the team plan to make a statement in the ACC with so many powerhouse programs? You know, uh, I think the ACC matches up with what Stanford stands for, is excellence in athletics, I think gives us a chance. We're a global institution, and I think being able to play in the best basketball conference and compete against the best, you get to measure yourself, and I think it'll help bring awareness of what Stanford basketball will be. We're, we'll cover a lot more time zones, and uh, as we compete and hopefully do well, it'll build our brand. Same row, Coach. Two people down to your left. Hello, Coach. Royal Howell, the Juice Network. Uh, Coach, uh, how was the recruiting process for Jalen, getting him from Duke University, North Carolina, over to Stanford? How was the whole recruiting process and transition for you? Truthfully, <laughs> it, was, it was a random. Our athletic director's wife, his their daughter, plays volleyball at Duke. And she said Jalen was a really good guy and he was available. And I said, my staff hasn't put me on it, so I, I took it from there. So I got to give full credit to Liz Muir, <laughs> Bernard Muir's <laughs> Well, she really did. And uh, kind of took it from there. And he made a lot of sense being a Duke guy, Blair Academy, my kind of guy. I think even when we did our Zoom, um, just giving our pitch, I could tell I think he kind of uh, would be invested in the way we do things. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been a great match thus far. Coach, to your right, third row, gentleman in the white dress shirt. Hi, Coach. TJ Wilkerson from the Sports Nerd Podcast. After a successful five-year stint at Washington State, what brought you over to Stanford? Well, Stanford's always, uh, it sounds crazy, but it's always been, I've always thought of it as the best job <laughs> in the country, period, um, for, especially for me, but I always thought the best, and that's going back to, um, uh, I'm old enough to remember when they were number one in the country, and I always thought just being able to get the true student athlete and uh, compete at the highest level is kind of the dream. And, you know, I grew up kind of following Duke and kind of thought of Coach K's early teams with Amaker and Dawkins, those guys, and therefore uh, kind of always thought that. And so to be, have that opportunity, I was just kind of tickled. You know, there was no negotiation. They kind of offered it to me. I said, yes. <laughs> so that that's like, hey, there's not much thinking to it for me. If you have a chance to go to Stanford, you do Stanford. Coach, directly in front of you, first row to your right. Coach Dan Tortora, wake of call DT.com. A unique position that you're in coming to Stanford in your first year with the school and first year of the school inside of the ACC. Just what that looks like for you and the parallel of that as something that's a new challenge for you personally is also a new challenge for the school. Yeah, I know obviously my career, I'm not afraid of challenges. Uh, going to Columbia, going to Washington State were really challenging. And uh, like I said, it's the it's the best conference for basketball, in my opinion. I mean, Tobacco Road, Duke, North Carolina, Virginia, Georgia Tech, all those schools that I grew up, uh, you know, following. Um, and, and to be able to, to be associated with that and kind of measure ourselves against those teams, I think will help. Like I said, we're a national brand, a global school. Um, and if we can uh, get some success, I think we'll attract really good talent. Question from the room at all? Coach, we'll go back to TJ to your right again, white shirt, third row. Coach, one of the one of the faults for this team was the struggles on defense. What's the plan to address that defense? You know, uh, we address it honestly by these two guys that are up here, uh, Jalen Blakes. I think he, he's really at the point of attack, and you, it's hard to be very good defensively if you can't stop the ball or. Uh, in transition or at least put some heat and thus far he's been tremendous in that area so I'm excited to see what that looks like I think that'll help uh, so recruiting is usually a big part of it and then uh, Maxime has uh, really grown in that area we've made a big emphasis since we got there if everyone knows he can score and he's a really good defensive rebounder um, but able to get him to be uh, more of a rim protector and just kind of plug things up that'll be good and and it's been our strength uh, with the pre you know I got pretty much the same staff from Washington State 
And that was our strength up there. And when you take over a, a program, that's usually the first thing we address is defend, you know, you gotta be able to defend every night to give yourself a chance. And we're kind of going through the same steps and I expect us to make, make, make improvements there. Coach, from the podium, you are known for nerd ball because of the focus on analytics. Could you describe nerd ball and what it means in your life? Uh, you know, nerd ball, we just do, we give our guys a lot of feedback, a lot of number crunching. The best way I can say is uh, we uh, quantify all the plays in basketball and kind of give these guys information. So, again, I think I'm at the right place in Stanford. They, they already identified themselves as nerd bef nerds before I got there. So I think it's a, it's a good marriage. Um, but that's the best way to say it. We just, almost everything we do, we give them a lot of feedback. Your last question will come to the right second row, young lady, once again. Um, right here, Coach. Um, my question to you is, with the change in staff, you guys added Jalen to your team, what is Stanford's impact and plan for success in this upcoming season? Uh, like I uh, said previously, we're going to have to defend better, uh, rebound better, and take care of the ball. And that's been the steady, you know, this is my fourth program that I've taken over, and that's kind of always been the mantra. So I feel like I've got a good blueprint in how to do this thing. And we, we don't really set hard goals, and it's, it's daily improvement. I know that sounds, uh, might sound silly to some, but that's kind of what we did at Washington State, too, and we were able to get better and better to a point where we were second round, made it, won a game in the NCAA tournament. I feel like Stanford is going to attract even better talent and really smart guys, and I think that we're just going to build this thing into something by doing those things to where we can be really competitive in this league. All right, thank you. Coach, thank you. You can switch places with right. Maxime. We will spend about four minutes with each of our student athletes. Again, please identify yourselves and the agency that you're with. First question for Maxime will come from your right, third row, gentleman in the white shirt. Maxine, being part of this program for a while under a new head coach now, can you tell us what the vibes were this off season and how you and coach have connected since he's came to Stan come to Stanford? Um, well, the very first thing was uh, trying to connect on a human level. Uh, I think coach took the time to text and call each of us individually, uh, take the time to maybe get food outside of campus, uh, you know, just have a, a normal conversation with uh, someone who is more than a student athlete. And then on the court, as he mentioned earlier, uh, there's been a big emphasis on the defensive end. Uh, we had six returners uh, over the spring that we kind of call like the hexagonal, uh, where he tried to set the tone with, and we kind of try to carry that over um, the summer with all the new guys coming in. So that's how the transition was made. Maxime, front row to your right, right in front of you. Maxime, Dan Tortora, wakeupcalldt.com. You just mentioned the new faces, just what you can say about the newcomers into this program for the Stanford Cardinal and how you would maybe define the talent and what you've brought in? Well, I think uh, a lot of talent was brought in uh, from all around the country with Jalen from the ACC, with uh, Chisel McPar from, from Harvard, uh, maybe Ozai Sellers from USC. I think all of these guys are really good for us. Um, we also have had a couple freshmen. Uh, also, by the way, uh, Darren Siren from UC Irvine. Um, I think all are really good workers. Um, most of them have like really like specific abilities, whether it's to shoot, to defend, uh, big bodies to drive down the lane. Um, all of them add something very unique to our team, um, which I think adds a lot of diversity, which is what we need. And all our freshmen have been so committed to the process of getting better, um, coming in early, getting their work in, embracing the physicality of college, which I think is a, is a big deal for freshmen. So yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm really happy to have all these guys with us now. And, uh, and I'm also really happy that we, we form a team as a whole. Um, I really feel like we don't have anything cliquey going on. It's really like 15 guys just hanging out together, uh, working towards the same objective. And I think that's the main thing, especially for me as a senior and potential leader of this team, like seeing the guys working for each other is, uh, is what makes me the happiest, yeah. Maxine, from the podium last year in the conference, you were the most improved player in the entire league. What was it about your game that led to that accolade? Um, I, think, I think it started like off the court. Um, I think it started with uh, David Birkin. Um, before every practice, every day, an hour before, just working out. Doesn't matter the time, doesn't matter the day. Uh, being consistent with that kind of, that kind of workout. Um, after three years of working with Mike Chapman in the weight room, uh, being able to get bigger, uh, get physical, um, obviously that helped me with like everything that comes with it, so like rebounding, scoring, and all this. But uh, 
I think after three years, you also get the confidence um, to, from your peers and from yourself, uh, whether it is my teammate that like, would trust me with the ball a bit more, my coaches, uh, obviously put myself in situations where I could perform a little bit better. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to take it to the next level this year and, uh, and help this team as much as possible. Maxine, thank you. If you want to switch spots with Jalen, we will spend a couple of minutes with Mr. Blakes. And Jalen, we've got your first question. Jalen, your first question will be to the right side in the second row. Hi, Jalen. Destiny with the Juice Network. My question is, with you, got, with you coming into Stanford, coming from Duke, um, how has the relationship been with building the guys and the team morale? Yeah, obviously, a uh, good question. Um, it's been great. I mean, when we first got here, Coach kind of highlighted our first goal was becoming a team and becoming a culture. And, you know, the Hexnel, they did a great job. You know, they were obviously the, the ones that had to set the tone, and they carried that tone over. But I think that everyone that entered that was new, a transfer or a freshman, came in with the mindset of being all in. And I think all of us were all in on committed to what Coach Smith has for us and as well as what we want for ourselves. And I think, you know, we've, had a, we've done a great job of building team chemistry, even some things we did um, off the court. You know, Coach Smith might have not been too happy about it. We might have went skydiving. Um, but <laughs> oh, he, didn't know, he didn't know about that, my bad. <laughs> but um, we definitely uh, created a bond where everybody is just together and we, we click well. Jalen, keep it on that same road, just to your left. Royal Howell, the Juice Network. Jalen. How was the conversation with Coach Shire for you to transfer from Duke ultimately? And what kind of factors played into that um, decision for you to leave? Was it incoming freshman, minutes allocation, or you progressing within the program? What kind of factors played into you leaving Duke University? Yeah, I'm grateful for my experience at Duke. You know, the past three years, um, you know, Coach K bringing me in, Coach Shire for what he's taught me, you know, graduating in three years. Um, I'm just truly, I was truly grateful for that experience. Um, but for me, my last year was you know, a new opportunity. Um, there's, you know, nothing about it. it. was just looking for a new opportunity, and I was just extremely grateful for those three years. And, you know, it's, it's going to be weird playing against them, but, you know, those, those people, you know, the brotherhood is truly real that, you know, I saw Tyrese and Caleb, Coach Shire, um, all the Duke people, and it was still all love, um, and that's truly great. Right in front of you, Jalen, first row. Jalen, Dan Tortora, Wake Up Call, DT.com. We have that student before athlete, but we don't talk about it as much. Nationally, you don't hear the student side of it. The Dr. Daryl Hart Award, team's top scholar athlete at Duke, you got it not once, but twice. Can you just go into that? Because now you're at a school where obviously education is a huge part of this. Um, yeah, it was a great award. Um, I know, you know, growing up in my family, education was very important. If I didn't have good grades, I wouldn't be able to play basketball, I wouldn't be able to play my video games. and. You know, it was always about, you know, first, my mom always taught me it was first being a great person, second, being a great student, and third, being a great athlete. And, you know, those are the things that I prioritize in my life. You know, obviously, you know, the ball is going to, it's going to eventually stop, but knowledge is something that no one can take away from you. And that was something that was very important for me, you know, as an athlete, but also as an African-American athlete that, you know, I showed that I was more than just an athlete. And that's a phrase that I try to carry throughout. And obviously, Duke is surrounded by great um, students, student athletes, and students in general, and Stanford's also surrounded by great students, so that was something that was very important to me. Jalen, your last question to your right, third row. Jalen, TJ Wilkerson from the Sports Nerd Podcast. We know you're an animal on defense, and we've seen short stints on offense as well. What offensively have you been working on over the offseason? Yeah, I think, you know, just being more consistent. Um, you know, obviously you talk about the stints, but, you know, just not making sure they're just stints, but cons constant you know, just constant um, improvement and growth and, you know, obviously working on my jump shot. You know, I think the coaching staff at Stanford has taken a lot of time in personal development, watching film and improving and making better decisions um, with the ball, without the ball, and just overall just improving my confidence um, offensively um, is something that's very important to me and that's something that I, I hope to show this year for sure. Stanford, we thank your head coach. We thank the basketball players and our thrill seekers and their skydivers. We thank you guys for being with us, and <laughs> welcome to the ACC. Folks, Florida State is due up next at 2.15.